What's up guys, Gary with self.dev. So before we get started, I know there's like a frame rate drop. I've been messing with the settings on the camera. Like I said, I'm trying to upgrade my camera. I got an A6 E300. So still trying to mess with that stuff and get that fixed, but just gotta deal with it for this video. Hopefully I'll have it fixed by the next one. Anyway, today we are gonna talk about tutorial projects, kind of riff off on a video that Stefan Mishkook put out called Our Tutorial Course Projects Good For Your Resume. Check out the video, I'll have it linked up somewhere. He's like the code father. He's just like late 30s, early 40s, and he's got a bunch of wisdom, and he's a good guy to look up to and learn from. But tutorial projects, should you put those on your portfolio? Should you put those on your resume? Probably not. So tutorial course projects, those are projects like the Twitter clone, or Frontend Masters has one with their React course where you basically, you're building an adopt me site, so you basically are coding alongside somebody and you're like, all right, he did a function here, he's declaring a variable here, he's pulling stuff from the API with a fetch request here, and you're not really solving it on your own. Now when you're a developer, you basically get a task and you have to go out and solve that task. You can't say, okay, I don't know how to do that, I can't do it. Or you can't say, hey, lead dev, can you come code this and I'll just kind of like do it beside you. You've got to figure it out. Now you can ask like other developers for help and get like tips and stuff. But for the most part, you've got to solve it on your own through looking at the documentation and figuring it out. Now, tutorial projects, you don't really learn a lot how to do that. Tutorial projects are more good for learning the syntax of the language, the basics, like what you can do with a language. Like, all right, this is how you write a function. This is how you declare variables. This is how you fetch data from an API, stuff like that. But they're not the best ones to put on your portfolio because it's kind of like Stefan says, plagiarism. Like it's like, there's a book called Harry Potter and to plagiarize this joke, um, you basically rewrite Harry Potter, but you change the character's name from Harry to Johnson or something like that. With the projects, you're basically taking the project they built and you might change the colors and a few of the titles on it. You might pull from a different API so the pictures are different, but you still did you still copied like 90% of the project from somebody else. So I wouldn't put those on your portfolio. I would put projects that you get from like Team Treehouse or Free Code Camp or my site selftaught-dev.com, sites that give you the project mock-up and then they're like, all right, this is what we need it to do, go do this. Because that pretty much simulates what you'd do at a job. You get like the mock-up from the designers or what it's supposed to look like. You get the specs on what it's supposed to do. And then you have to go out and figure out how to do it after you've learned like the syntax and the functionality of the language. Speaking of, this is Stefan. Go follow him. I'll have him linked up in the description. But this is selftot-dev.com. I've been making monthly projects for aspiring front-end developers for the past year. So you basically just click on the project like Fluble homepage, and then you can download the project files, and there's a little video of what the project's supposed to look like, the functionality. I've also got that written down in the README, and then you can download the project as an Adobe XD file. Adobe XD is free. All you need is a Creative Cloud account, and then you've got the little mock-up of the project, and you can build the project. Now, I don't go over the CSS, like how to set that up. I don't go over any, over any of the functionality for the projects. I basically give you the project, tell you what it's supposed to do, and then you go out and get that figured out. Now, that's the second level of projects that I would include on your portfolio. So tutorial course projects, probably don't inclu include those. If it's all you've got, you can include them, but start working on your own projects that you built like this. And then the second level is projects that you've got from like Free Code Camp, Team Treehouse, or selftaught-dev.com. Third level that Stefan talks about is going out to companies and saying, hey, you're a gym, the plague's here and you can only have a certain number of members that you're in your gym at a time. So you need an app where people can schedule their workouts. I will build that app for you for free. All I need is for you to give me a review after you're done so I can put that on my portfolio and I can get into freelance app development. Or so you can have the reference to show off to potential employers. That's like the third level because you're actually going out you are like showing a lot of initiative, just going out and talking to companies and trying to be like, hey, let me build your app for you. And then you can talk about, hey, I used X, Y, and Z technology for this because of A, B, and C reason. And you're basically doing the problem solving that a developer would do there. 
So that's the like pinnacle of projects that you can include on your portfolio. So if I was starting over and like starting from ground zero, what I'd probably do is do a few tutorial course projects to learn like the basics, the syntax of the language. Granted, you don't have to use tutorial course projects to do that. You can just like use some, you can use like free code camp if you like the text-based version and then the interactivity of that's really cool. But learn the basics of the language, then build three or four projects on your own from like selftaught-dev.com or freecodecamp or Team Treehouse that show that you can do this on your own. Then go to random companies and be like, hey, I will build an app for you or I will revamp your website or something where you get to go out and, and implement what you've learned on your own. Now you don't have to have those. I got a job just with like projects that you do on your own, like projects that Team Treehouse gave me where they were like, hey, here's the mock-up. Here's the specs, go do this. And I was able to get a job with just projects like that. So you don't have to go out and talk to companies and get projects from them. You can just do stuff from Free Code Camp, Team Treehouse, selftaught-dev.com. Those can get you the job too. It's just way more impressive if you go out and do it with the companies because that shows a lot of drive and a lot of hunger and that you are also have decent social skills because you have to have decent social skills to convince a company to let you build something for them or sales skills at least too but yeah i think that's about it for this video if you disagree or agree let me know down in the comments so we can have a little discussion and get our opinions going or come join the discord in the description and talk to me there there's also a bunch of other aspiring developers or other developers that you can talk with if you want me to review your resume and give you some feedback on your resume, my email is in the description as well. If you want to get my resume template that I use to get the job I have now, and this is the resume before I had any work experience, so it's just like skills, projects, and no work experience on there, check in the description. I'll have a way for you to get that as well. And uh, give me a thumbs up if this helps you out at all, and I will continue to do stuff like this. So that's it. Peace. Round one.